Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium sports picks on Roku in the sports section. The vanity code is Dwyer Boxing News, one word. You can add channel on your Roku account here online. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, no doubt by now you've heard that Sergei Kovalev, who I picked here in numerous fights, including the fight in the UK against Nathan Cleverly, no doubt you've heard that this guy is the next big thing in boxing, right? He's on par with Gennady Golovkin, right? In some ways, he's better than Golovkin. I believe he lets his hands go more, right? And I'm sure you've heard that Bernard Hopkins is older than former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson. I'm talking about today he's older than Mike Tyson, right? Uh, Bernard Hopkins pretty soon is going to be a member of AARP, right? Hopkins is in his very late 40s. I'm sure by now you've heard that the Las Vegas casinos feel that Kovalev will win this fight. Right, Kovalev is a pretty sizable favorite. You might know that I've made a video on this fight already here online in which I've said that I believe Hopkins has a chance to win this fight. Let's go one step further. The bet I'm recommending is Hopkins to win the fight, hedged with Kovalev by KO. Let's talk about why this is an updated video what I want people to do is I want you to go back to the film of Kovalev against Blake Caparello, right? That first round, not the knockdown that Caparello gets against Kovalev. I want you to look at the punch right before the knockdown. I want you to see how open Kovalev is right understand that's not a flash knockdown Kovalev gets hurt then he gets dropped right what I also want you to do is to go back to the rematch Kovalev had against Darnell Boone now understand I know there are many of you who believe Hopkins is gonna get blown out early in this fight understand the first time Kovalev fought Darnell Boone the fight went eight rounds. Understand, Kovalev won by a debatable split decision. Right, so you're going to notice in the rematch, as I've pointed out in the first video, that first round, you would imagine Boone, having seen Kovalev, had some thoughts on exactly what strategy he should be employing. He starts hitting Kovalev with straight left hands. Right, the punches get through. Now, let me say this too. Go to the ring entrance. Not even the fight, the ring entrance of Bernard Hopkins against Kelly Pavlik. You're going to notice right over Hopkins' shoulder, and I have this fight in my favorites here on YouTube. You're going to notice the guy who enters the ring with Hopkins and Nassim Richardson is Kovalev's trainer John David Jackson, a guy who Hopkins fought when Jackson was a professional fighter many years ago. Right? Understand Kovalev likely has inside information from his trainer who not only has fought against Hopkins in the ring, but who has been part of Hopkins' corner for big fights. Right? Nonetheless, even with the insider information, even with the age gap, right? Even with the fact that Hopkins has had a problem against certain types of fighters, right? High hand speed, high volume, very front foot heavy aggressive types like Joe Calzaghi, right? A great jab mixed with youth and volume in Jermaine Taylor, 
Despite the problems Hopkins has had in those fights, I think Hopkins should win this fight because I believe he's figured out what Ali, what Jack Johnson, what Floyd Mayweather, what Salvador Sanchez all figured out. And that's that the sport isn't about brute strength. It's not about punching and knocking people out. Right? At its foundational core, the sport is about angles, timing, and leverage. Right? Understand that Kovalev has holes in his game. He gets hit with straight punches. He's a hunter, not the hunted. As he's hunting you down, he's open. Think about it. The Blake Caparello fight. He gets hit in the body. His body's wide open. Just look at his body as you look at that Caparello first round. His body's wide open. Right then when he comes in and he gets hit with the good body shot, understand his hands aren't even up. He he turns to the side. He's doubled over. This is a surprise. Right? This is news to him. In other words, he came to bomb out his opponent. He wasn't actually prepared to get hit back. So of course Caparello comes right back with a straight punch that catches him clean. Understand, Kovalev isn't rolling with the punch. Kovalev's caught clean. He then hits the canvas. Right? Forget the commentary. Let's throw out the, you know, fan club cable sports commentary that went along with the fight. Kill the volume. Just look at that sequence. And now just imagine if it's not Blake Caparello. Just imagine if it's Bernard Hopkins who took out Oscar De La Hoya with a body shot. And he's fighting a guy who he knows. When he comes in and you change the angle a little bit, his body's wide open. Not only that, as he turns, he's wide open to straight punches. Now let me say this. Right? The problems go deeper than that. Now I don't mean to, you know criticize Kovalev to the point where he sounds like he lacks talent not at all trust me when I say Kovalev has been very good to me I've been betting on Kovalev for a while now right I knew he would take out Nathan Cleverly because Cleverly was gonna stay in the pocket but what I also know is that the guy has never made it to the ninth round he's only made it to the eighth round once in a fight he wins by split decision Cedric Agnew takes him to the seventh round, right? Look closely at his fights. You're going to notice, take that Agnew fight. He gets cut, right? He's been cut in multiple fights. Agnew's in a defensive shell. Understand, Agnew makes it to the seventh round, right? Kovalev eventually figures out that his left hand can end the fight, right? But what happens if Agnew's actually moving around the ring, right? What happens if Agnew understands Kovalev's rhythm and can actually defend himself? Let me ask you two, isn't a problem with Caparello and Agnew the fact that they're pretty much in the pocket? They're in front of Kovalev. Why don't we redefine the pocket? Right? Instead of just saying right in front, why don't we redefine the pocket to be the entire space in front? In other words, let's make it three dimensional. Isn't the problem Kovalev is going to have in this fight going to be that Hopkins will be able to hit him with straight punches? and not be in the pocket in front of him. Right? Hopkins can fight low. If he fights low and is able to get off straight punches, if he's able to read Kovalev's movement, right? And if he figures out that Kovalev doesn't slide his front foot, he picks it up. Right? Look at his front foot in the Caparello fight. 
he's picking it up right if a guy is picking up his front foot can't you figure out when he doesn't have the leverage to knock you out right also if Kovalev's getting hit with not really jabs but more lunge punches kind of like what Darnell Boone does in the rematch if he's getting hit with lunge punches and actually has to show us some defense how do you know his defense is going to be better than it was in the first round against Blake Caparello understand too I'm not picking a fight in the distant past I'm picking his most recent fight where Kovalev had to get up off the canvas in fact let's talk through Kovalev's opponents his recent opponents you know what I think about Nathan Cleverly he might as well be a tree he sprouts roots into the canvas he thinks that Boxing is a masculinity test. He's standing right in front of Sergei Kovalev trying to trade with him. Think about that. He's not using angles in the slightest. Right? He's getting hit with bombs. He actually just hunkers down in the pocket. But that's not Bernard Hopkins. What you're going to have is Bernard moving. Look at the Kelly Pavlik fight. Bernard's going to be moving because he knows his opponent here is flat-footed. Not only that, he might even be able to figure out when the opponent's going to throw punches. The other problem is, of course, that Kovalev is a mid-range hooker. His punches come with a curve. So Hopkins is going to be able to have time to block the shot right expect to see Hopkins bending moving moving his feet right being faster foot speed wise than Kovalev in terms of positioning expect to see Kovalev turning expect to see Hopkins throwing the straighter punches expect to see Hopkins actually hitting Kovalev to the body Understand the problem with mid-range hookers, too. It's like a tornado. Kovalev can't smother Hopkins. Kovalev's not Andre Ward. He's not going to be able to take that extra step forward and lean on Bernard Hopkins because he needs room to operate. Contrast that with Hopkins, who can fight inside. Think about it. Also, look at Hopkins' opponents. I'm telling you, and I know the world disagrees with me. I'm telling you that Jean Pascal hits hard. The first fight against Pascal is really the fight to look at if you're a Kovalev supporter. Pascal drops Hopkins twice early right early now I would argue that Pascal throws straighter punches and is less predictable and is better defensively than Sergei Kovalev right understand though what happens after Hopkins is dropped twice and I know there's a question about a rapid punch and stuff like that just understand that when Hopkins gets off the canvas he then dominates Pascal dominates him right it's almost like Manny Pacquiao Juan Manuel Marquez right Marquez comes out that first fight gets drilled gets off the canvas then gets a draw with Manny Pacquiao but as you're looking at the draw you're thinking man you know what Pacquiao dropped this guy three times and you're telling me over the rest of this fight right Marquez wins three more rounds at Manny Pacquiao right by the end of that first Pacquiao Marquez fight you were left thinking oh man you know Marquez seems to be the better boxer well that's the way it was for Hopkins Pascal 
right? You ended the first fight, and then, of course, you heard about the draw. In fact, you were watching the end of the fight, and you thought, man, Hopkins is doing well here. Man, Pascal can't step on the gas. Pascal's neutralized. Well, here's what I want people to consider, because you know I don't buy the hype. The second fight. Pascal hits the canvas multiple times. Now, I know the referee called that a slip, right? Let's just say those slips seem to coincide with Pascal getting hit with some bombs, right? But the point was understand who Hopkins is. By the time that second fight came around, about the only people who knew Jean Pascal better than Bernard Hopkins were probably his wife and his parents, right? Hopkins is putting on a clinic. I believe Hopkins starts dropping Jean Pascal. He's figured out the holes in Pascal's game. He's figured out the angles. And I believe this is a guy with faster hand speed than Sergei Kovalev. So, given the holes in Kovalev's game, you know, in fact, that Blake Caparillo Knockdown sequence. Have you ever seen Hopkins as naked? Ever. As Kovalev is from the body shot before the knockdown punch. If you're one of these people who believes that's a slip or a flash knockdown, what other flash knockdowns do you know of that actually are two punch combinations? that are actually preceded by the kind of punch Caparillo hits Kovalev with right before the knockdown. Right? Also, as you look at Kovalev coming forward, and I know Kovalev plays a good cat and mouse game. Sometimes he looks cautious. Sometimes he comes forward. Are you sure that he's the dominant body puncher in this fight? Are you? Think about it, too. Let's say Hopkins gets overwhelmed. Let's say Kovalev comes in and suddenly has Joe Calzaghe-type hand speed. Let's say it's even more of a problem than that. Let's say suddenly Kovalev is a southpaw with Joe Calzaghe-type hand speed and Joe Calzaghe-type volume. Understand Bernard Hopkins went 12 rounds with Joe Calzaghe. Right? Understand that fight was a split decision. That's against Joe Calzaghe. Is anyone watching this video of the mindset that Kovalev can match Calzaghe in hand speed, angles, ring savvy, or volume? So I believe Hopkins is fighting a guy who, quite frankly, looks great on his front foot. Looks great. Has home run hitting capability in both hands. Throws a straight jab, actually. The problem's this. Kovalev's jab is not Jermaine Taylor's jab. It's not going to remind anyone of Larry Holmes. Right? Kovalev's hooks are such that Cedric Agnew makes it to the seventh round. Right? Darnell Boone makes it to the eighth round. Right? Kovalev's balance is such that he's on the canvas against Cedric Agnew, right? It's ruled a headbutt or whatever, but he falls on the canvas against Cedric Agnew, right? He falls on the canvas against Blake Caparello, right? His defense is such that in less than two rounds, he gets hit with a brutal body shot from Blake Caparello, and he gets dropped by Blake Caparello. He gets hit in the first minute of the Darnell Boone rematch with several straight punches from Darnell Boone, you would have thought, since it was a rematch, Kovalev would have been prepared for that. So let me say this. Let's all prepare ourselves to be shocked. I think what's going to happen is Hopkins is going to come out. Hopkins is going to show movement. Understand Hopkins is notorious in some fights for being a slow starter. Right? But let's not kid ourselves. Kovalev is not prime Chad Dawson. 
He's not. Right? Kovalev isn't going to move that well. Hopkins is not going to be as upright as Ishmael Shalak. He's also not going to try to stand in front of Kovalev and rely on his boxing brilliance like Ishmael Shalak did. Right? He's not going to stand up right in front of Kovalev and rely on his boxing brilliance like Nathan Cleverly did. Nor is he going to be leaned over the ropes in a shell hoping that Kovalev punches himself out like Cedric Agnew did. This is a real opponent who, in my opinion, is going to be throwing straight lunges. Left hand, eventually right hand. He's then going to be moving around the ring, forcing Kovalev to come find him. Right? Kovalev is going to walk forward. Hopkins is going to be looking at that front foot. When that front foot hits the canvas and the leverage is gone, Hopkins is going to know he doesn't have a punch to worry about. Okay, I think we're going to get to the fourth, fifth, sixth rounds. I wouldn't even be surprised if Hopkins gets decked once. Maybe even twice, like he was in the Jean Pascal fight. But I'm expecting Hopkins to then take over the match. I'm expecting Hopkins by round six to have control of the match. Understand, Kovalev has been cut in fights. Kovalev has been headbutted in fights. Right? Being inside isn't his forte. He's a mid range hooker. The punches come at curves. Right? He's looking for a tree to chop, to chop down. What happens if there's no tree? What happens if the opponent's actually moving around? Right? Doesn't have roots in the soil, but is actually mobile. And the opponent is pot-shotting him. Right? Look for the clinches, too. If Bernard Hopkins is able to tie up Kovalev in that first round on demand, Folks, the fight's over. If I had one bet to make on this fight, it's the underdog. I like Bernard Hopkins to win this fight. I am going to hedge the play with Kovalev by KO. Why? Because that's how Kovalev makes a living. He's not beating you in 10-round decisions. In fact, he's never gone 10 rounds. He's not beating you in 12-round decisions because he hasn't gone 12 rounds. Think about it. This is that rare fight where the 49-year-old likely has more stamina than the young lion right as I said before boxing's all about angles look at Hopkins move he's not gonna be right in front of Kovalev let me also say too, Hopkins has fought more technical fighters right think about it you know Joe Calzaghe Roy Jones Antonio Tarver right these are tougher matchups Calzaghi, Tarver, they're both southpaws, right? Trust me when I say, in his day, Roy Jones' left hook was as dangerous as anything Kovalev has in his arsenal, right? I think public opinion is a bit off right here. I like the proven fighter. I like the fighter with the 12 rounds experience. I like the fighter who's already fought and tamed young lions, dangerous lions, like Tavares Cloud, Jean Pascal, right? Kelly Pavlik. Think about it. Kelly Pavlik had a great jab. Kovalev doesn't even have that. Didn't we think Pavlik hit too hard for Hopkins? I like the old man hedged with the opponent by KO. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and to the Kovalev people who think I'm crazy. And I've heard from you in the past. I've read the comments on the earlier video. Explain to us exactly what happens when Blake Caparello knocks down Kovalev. Can we concede that that's not a flash knockdown? Because Kovalev is hurt. 
off the body shot right before the knockdown. And as you look at the sequence, explain for all of us exactly what Kovalev is trying to do defensively there. Because it looks like he gets hit in the body flush. Then it looks like he gets hit flush and dropped. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.